Welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Senapadaratna. Grab your favorite drink, get a snack, and we will get started. Today, I have some of those sugar wafer cookies and some mango Ceylon tea, because it needed to be simple today. <laughs> well, let's get real. You know, sometimes in life, you're cruising along and something hits you out of the blue, something really little, Um, that just kind of derails you. And I want to share a story with you about that in my life. So I've shared a little bit about my relationship with my dad and kind of how that works. And, you know, whether it works or not, it matters on the day, to be honest. But I got a text message from him the other day in a response. So whenever I go somewhere, part of what I do is is I send him a picture just to keep him connected. Um, We don't chat a lot. I see him once a year. It's really um, kind of a um, interesting relationship. And so he sent back something with his first name instead of the word dad and with his new wife's name. So his name and his wife's name. And I just kind of lost it. (laughs) It was like one of those moments that I was like, okay, when did you become a friend instead of a father? Like it was just, you know, you're not used to your, I don't sign my text messages very often unless it's someone that I really don't know. Um, But to sign your text message and it not be dad just threw me and it was just one more step of like disconnection I think it was just one more like reminder of the lack of a relationship that I have that you would love to have right like you want to um, have relationship with your family that is something that all of us yearn for or relationship just in general and when those relationships start disintegrating you have to figure out how to make them work for you. And my relationship with my dad is very different than any of my siblings. And that is okay. It is the way that I kind of feel like it works for us. Although then all of a sudden that day, I thought this is not working. Um, (laughs) So in the last year, it has gone from not good to really not good. And I think for me, that was kind of the like little cherry on top. And now I am not on here to like complain about my dad. That's really not what it is because it is a two way street. It is not all him that I have put up boundaries. I have put up things in my life. Um, I have made mistakes. So let's it's really not about that. It is about that moment. That moment when you're cruising along thinking, you know what, I'm doing life. Like life is going good. Things are fine. And all of a sudden, a text message or something in a store or a smell. I hate when it's a smell. (laughs) Just brings you back to a place of pain. Just brings you back to a place where you were struggling. And it happens to all of us, right? All of a sudden, you're just walking along and you see something or you smell something or you get a text message or a phone call. I mean, it is so many little minor little things that just bring you automatically back to one of the most painful times in your life. And that's what this did. That when I saw his first name and his wife's new wife's name instead of dad, I just reeled back to a year ago when he got married without telling us and I didn't know the lady's name that he got married to and he removed us from the will and which is fine like I am not worried about the money like that's not at all but it was just kind of another like thing that you're just kind of sliced out of and you just feel like you're being sliced out of someone's life and you're like what did I do wrong and it just brings you back to that moment of pain And I sat there and I'm looking at my text message and I don't want to burden anybody else with this because it seems really little and really minor, but it brought me back to some hardcore feelings. And that's the moment that I was like, Lord, this is bigger than me. (laughs) And this is bigger than my emotions and this is bigger than my pain and I need you. 
And I just wanted to come on and remind you today because there are so many times that um, we can get overwhelmed by our past and get overwhelmed by mistakes that we maybe made or my least favorite thing in the whole world is when I'm about to go to bed. (laughs) Okay, so many of you know where I'm going. Like when I'm about to go to bed and all of a sudden something that I said to someone hits me and I go, oh, wow, that was not appropriate. Or, oh, wow, how is that going to blow up in my face? Like all of a sudden, all my conversations from the day come flooding to me right before I hit bed. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I was a buffoon today. Like I just messed up. That happened the other day. I was swinging along in life. I hit the pillow and I all of a sudden, like a comment that I made to someone random that is not part of my circle just a random person that I know but I really don't and I was like oh wow that's not a good thing for me to have said and I am constantly like okay how do I take care of that and the Lord just reminded me during that text message and during that night that the conversation came back to me and I was like oh that was not a good plan Jenny what were you thinking And it wasn't anything rude. I wasn't like being rude. It was just like, you know, sometimes when you've made a dumb comment (laughs) that you're like, okay, I don't think that came out the way I intended it to come out. And the Lord was like, take that cat, take that thought captive. And we talk about that a lot in my house, taking your thoughts captive and bringing them before the Lord. And it really, for me, means that I just grab hold of that thought and I'm like, Lord, I need to give this to you. I need you to deal with this because this battle I can't fight. This battle is in the past. This is not something that I can change. This is not something I cannot rewind time. Unless you've invented a time machine, then connect with me. Like I would, that would probably be good for me because I make a lot of mistakes that I'd like to rewind and undo. (laughs) But I can't undo that. I can't go back and find this person that I barely know and say, hey, you know, let me fix that comment that I said to you because that's not what I intended to say. I think I said it wrong. That That's not possible. So I need to go before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to fight that battle. I need you to step in and not make it blow up in my face. And just, Lord, that you would just allow them to forget it or that you would allow me to deal with the consequences in a pro- in a proper way or whatever. You know, like, Lord, I need to give this to you and have a sense of peace about it. And that's not easy because you, I am a fixer. Like, I am not as much of a fixer as I used to be, but I like to see a problem and fix it. Like that is part of what I miss in my current job with Christ Connection. I miss the ability to like fix problems (laughs) and see like an issue and go, okay, if we do A, B, and C, then this will all be fixed. Don't worry about it. So I love that. One of my favorite things at my former job is we were missing volunteers. Like we needed parents to come in and volunteer. And I was like, ooh, that's awesome. I love that. So I fixed it and got involved and got, got, I had so many wonderful, wonderful volunteers that I worked with at my old job that are still my friends to this day. Um, They just, they, I just love them so much. And I saw a problem that we were having and I figured out a system to fix it. And so I am always doing that with these moments that I'm like, how can I fix this? What can I do? Should I text him back and say, what's happening? Are you upset with me? Or do I just need to let it be and let the Lord handle it? And the Lord heal me and heal my side of it and trust that he's going to heal the other side. And so I just wanted to encourage you that you are okay if those moments creep up on you, first of all. (laughs) Those moments are going to creep up on you. There are going to be times that all of the pain from the past are going to sweep in in a instant and you will not see it coming. You will be just swimming along going, okay, I'm not doing super great or you're doing great and all of a sudden something just sneaks up on you and slaps you in the face and you're like, oh, wow. And all that pain comes back. That's very normal. 
And that's the moment that you need to snuggle into God and say, God, I need your strength right now because I don't have it. I do not have peace. I do not have strength. I am feeling out of control and I need you to step in right here. Also, just a reminder that it's okay to have made mistakes. It's okay to not fix it all. Because the Lord is bigger than our situations. My um, daughter was sharing with me that when she, you know, was in fifth grade, she was sharing Jesus with someone and she's like, I don't think I did a great job with that. And I'm like, but the Lord doesn't stop there. The Lord takes what you did and adds on to it. You are not the only cog in the wheel that the Lord can use in someone's life. Or the only person that can make this relationship or this um, situation better. The Lord can have other people step in and do healing in those through other people. It is not always your responsibility. I don't know who needs to hear that today other than myself. That it is not your responsibility to fix everything. It is the Lord can step in and do mighty things that you could never even think of. He can be, he's more creative. He is stronger and he is more um, able to convince people than you're ever going to (laughs) be. His ideas and the people that he can bring into people's lives to bring healing, that is not always your responsibility. Your responsibility is to take care of yourself and your actions and own up to your actions too. I'm not saying that we could just go around acting all a fool and being mean to people and that's okay. That's not what I mean. But we also cannot continually hold the responsibility of something that we've apologized for and that we just have to move on because you can't go back in time and fix the stupid things I did a year ago or in my 20s. Like I cannot go back and undo that because I'm not the same person first of all. And thank the Lord. But some of you need to start forgiving yourselves. Like forgiveness is for other people. Yes. But forgiveness really, sometimes you need to forgive yourself. And allow that pain to turn into forgiveness for yourself. And into trust in the Lord. That he will continually fight your battle for you. And you don't have to. And that's so hard because we don't see it, right? We don't see what the Lord is doing. I will never see how God takes that stupid comment I made the other day and turns it into something good. I, I will, they're not part of my life. I will probably never see them again. So I will never see how the Lord turns that into good, but I can trust that he will because I know that my heart was, you know, where it should have been. And I'm going before the Lord saying, Hey Lord, I made a mistake and I trust that this isn't going to blow up in my face. And sometimes it does. And you deal with that natural consequence and that's okay, but it does not need to define you. And so often these failures in these things in the past, when they creep up, they become a definition for you and they become a label for you and they become something that you kind of believe about yourself. And that's not what the Lord wants for you. The Lord wants you to live in freedom in him and know that his forgiveness is as far as the east is from the west. That he does not remember those things. He is forgiving you and you're the one that continually is living in it. And so let's live in God's peace and forgiveness and kind of move forward. And that's what I'm hoping to do after a good cry. (laughs) Well, that's all I have for you this week. I just pray that the Lord will continually renew you. That he will come in and when those moments hit you, that he will give you a renewal of strength, a renewal of peace, a renewal of forgiveness, and that he steps in and you go, Lord, I see that you've got this. I see you're in control and I trust you today. You can find me at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram, Facebook, and Be Real. You can also find me at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. I am currently booking for the fall and Christmas of 2024. I know it seems like a long ways away, but it is coming up quick. And so here we are. And those weekends are filling up quickly, but that's great. I'm super excited about what God's doing. 
And I just know that this week when you have one of those moments that hit you out of the blue, that the Lord will come in and say, I'm going to take this for you today and I'm going to let you enjoy your day because I am in control and I love you. That's what God says to you. I am in control and I love you. You all have a great week.